Welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. Well, our thermometer told us that it got down to 27 degrees here last night. For the first or second week of April, that always means a little bit of damage in the garden. Fortunately, our herbs are all quite cold hardy. They were just fine, even the seedling dill that's coming up. Our cold crops, too, made it through that temperature without any damage at all. The spinach that we sowed last fall is also just fine. And the other cool season crops can take those temperatures as well, including onions. In fact, our onion sets that we put out need thinning. And when you're doing this, just go ahead and pull up a few to use in salads. I usually like to just start out with every other one, and then as they get larger, take out a few more to allow them to size up later in the season. Now the lettuce has come up, as has the spinach and Swiss chard. It needs thinning right now. And in order to get nice sized leaf lettuce plants, it's really a good idea to keep them two or three inches apart. Don't forget these thinnings are very tasty. Rinse them off, put them in salads. They're perfectly useful for that. On the spinach, you can do the same thing, same way with Swiss chard. Just take out about every other plant, give them a little extra space for growing. If they're too crowded, your leaves will stay small, the plants won't grow as well. On our Swiss chard, I'll probably leave two of them side by side in a cluster. They're going to get quite large, and the Swiss chard's going to be with us all summer. But I'll leave a couple there for now, just in case, and I'll thin out one one last one as they start to get a little bit bigger. But it's nice to have just several good clumps of it to grow through the summer. In fact, I had a gardener tell me last week that he had a Swiss chard plant in his garden for three consecutive years. He just kept picking off the outer leaves and it just fine. Well, we did have some freeze damage on our potato crop. If we'd covered these over, they might have been fine, but as you can see, they have that typical water-soaked black appearance of something that has freeze damage. Now, these potatoes might send up some fresh shoots, so we're going to leave them in place and hope for the best. If you are the least bit concerned, you might dig down and see if the tubers themselves were damaged. You may want to replant. Let's go see how the asparagus made it through 27 degree temperatures, and then take a look at some of our warm season crops that had some protection last night. Well, it looks like our asparagus had a mixed response to the freeze last night. Some of these spears are just fine, whereas others have a very dark green, water-soaked appearance that tells me that they were damaged by the freeze. Here's one right here. It's very watery at the top. It's turned black. That one will snap off at ground level and remove. There'll be other spears coming up and they'll be just fine. Now back here, this one for some reason is fine. It wasn't damaged at all. But you can see the contrast in the two. So this one I'll leave in place for maybe one more day and then harvest it. This one back here had gotten over mature anyway and it too was frozen. So we'll take that out but leave this one in place because it's just fine. Then up ahead here, here's another one that was damaged. It's very dark green, very, very limber. We'll take those off, but leave this one in place. With asparagus, make sure you do check it every day for harvest, and especially after this freeze, clear out those that were damaged. Well, I'm going to go see how the peppers and tomatoes did. We had those covered over with straw, so hopefully they made it through just fine. Last week, we installed this mulch trial for our summer pepper plantings. We went ahead and put the peppers in later that day after we finished taping the show. And then last night, they were covered over with some straw mulch to protect them from the freeze. Now it's interesting, down here on the south end, the wind blew the mulch away. And sure enough, this pepper was completely wiped out. Wilted down, the leaves are very dark, have a water-soaked appearance. That pepper's not going to come back. And we will replant that one. This one right here, was only partially uncovered by the wind. And so some of the foliage was killed back, 
but the other side of the plant, this half, is still nice and green and healthy. And so we'll probably leave it in place. It will probably recover. This plant back here was completely covered over by two or three inches of straw, and it's just fine. Made it through the freeze just great. But it really does pay in Oklahoma, if you're not going to do any mulching or protecting, to wait until April 15th to put in peppers and tomatoes unless you plan to mulch. Otherwise, something like this can happen almost every year. We have eight varieties of tomatoes planted along our cattle panel trellis here, all the way from a large slicing tomato like Big Early down to Sweet Million, which is a very small cherry tomato that produces abundantly and should do real well along the trellis. Well, fortunately, they were all covered over with straw last night. The Sweet Million pulled through just fine, as did the other tomatoes. Now keep this straw handy or prairie hay or whatever you have on hand, keep it handy over the next few weeks so you can cover them back over if there is a chance of a frost. Well, let's go see how Jim fared in the fruit orchard, see what sort of damage we had there. Our golden current, even though it's in full bloom, as you can see, came through the 27 degrees with basically no damage that I can find. I've cut several buds, several flowers. I haven't seen any damage from the cold. So at least the gold current, we should have fruit on this year. Our blueberries are in various stages of bloom, especially this one has started to have, this variety, several of the flower buds has started to open. And those that are most developed and are fully open, if you look carefully, you can see those petals are very water soaked. Those are dead. They've been frost, frost killed. The younger buds, the ones that aren't developed as much, they seem to be okay. I've cut open several of them and they look fine. Now that brings up a point. As those flower buds start to develop in the spring and grow, they start out with more hardiness and lose that as they develop and as they come into full bloom. So the earlier buds, the ones that are just starting to develop, are more tolerant to frost than the more developed, fully open ones. So what we'll see on this, the more advanced flower buds will go ahead and fall off but these younger buds should survive and should come along and make some fruit. This is our Duke cherry. A Duke cherry is a cross between a sweet cherry and a sour cherry. And it has been in bloom for full bloom for several days. It has fared not quite as well as many of the other plants. If we look at some of the blossoms, there are a few like this one where the female part, the stigma, is still green and there is still probably hope for that one, but we get a lot of the flower buds that look like this. The stigma has been frozen. It started to turn brown. It's been several hours now since it started to warm up. Initially, you wouldn't probably see the difference. It starts out green, but as it warms up for a while, you'll start getting that brown coloration and that's where we've had the freeze damage. If we cut these open, Right down at the base, inside is where the cherry fruit would develop from. Right down here is where it would have developed into a cherry. See how dark it is, how water soaked it looks? That's dead. Look at this one with the, still has the green stigma. The bottom parts might be dead, but no, it's, See that bright green color? This one is still alive and does still have a chance of setting fruit. So it's not a total loss on the cherries. If you compare the two side by side, you can see the definite difference in the coloration. So we still should get some fruit off of the cherries, but from the looks of it, it'll be very little. We get down to our apricot tree. We got through bloom time on the apricots and they've set fruit and they've started developing. I could almost taste the apricots, but if you look at them, they're no longer that bright, healthy green color. They're getting dark and if you feel them, they're squishy instead of being firm. We look at the base, base of the fruits, you start seeing the skin's been cracked, starting to wrinkle up, and if we cut them open, 
You can see how soft that is. You can see the flesh is just very, very soft and water soaked. Unfortunately, apricots are a total loss for this year. But there's always hope for next year. Peaches. This is our topaz tree. Uh, we just have a few blossoms and fruit in there, so I don't want to cut any of those open. Just from looking at them, there's still a fairly healthy green color, so there's still a little bit of hope for our peaches. The other peach tree, the candor, we have a lot more bloom on it, so I don't mind tearing off a few of those to cut open and look at. Just like on the cherries, we're going to cut open, slice it down the middle, it's still hope. It's nice bright green color. So these peaches, cross fingers, we still have a chance of a crop on our peaches. Let's go take a look at the strawberries. People sometimes ask if the flower blossoms on say their apple tree or their peach tree get wiped out by a frost, will that tree or the fruit plant rebloom? Unfortunately the answer is no. On all of the fruit plants the flower blossoms were formed last year and have gone through the winter. If they're all destroyed in the spring, you don't have another chance at a crop until next year. What sometimes happens is that not all the flower buds develop at the same rate. So there may be unopened flower buds or partially opened flower buds that you don't see that make it through the frost and then go ahead and open later. You don't have a second reblooming; it's just the tail end of the original bloom that escaped the frost. On the strawberries, whatever flowers were opened, if you look down in the center of them, what would have been the strawberry fruit is all black. And unfortunately, anything that has bloomed was hit by that frost and has been damaged. Actually, it's been, been killed. If we cut this open and look, this little cone shape in the middle of the flower, that's what would have been the strawberry. You can see it's been, it has been frost killed. Look down at some of the smaller unopened buds, but still out and exposed to that cold. You can see the cone, what would have been the strawberry. You can see that even these have been, been destroyed by the frost. Now look, looking down at one of these clusters that's underneath the canopy and a little bit more protected. It's almost going to mulch, a cover over it to, to protect it. Cut this one open. Here we can see the again the cone that will be the strawberry, and it's still a bright green. So any that are still under the foliage probably have a chance of getting a crop. Another thing to mention is that these are just the earliest flowers from these strawberries. By no means are these all of the flower clusters. Not all of them have emerged. So we've lost our earliest flowers, which would have been our earliest berries but we still do have a chance for a crop on our strawberries. One thing I do want to, two things I want to point out, on all of our strawberries were mulched in December. From this point down, I removed the mulch in late January, so that end went through that cold freeze we had in the beginning of February where it got down to two below zero, and it stayed exposed bare all the way up from then until now. This half stayed covered through that freeze, was protected, and it stayed mulched until mid-March. And you can see the big, two big differences. One is that the early uncovered was uncovered back in January. There are a lot more blooms. It has developed a lot faster. The other thing to notice is that what was uncovered early and went through the freeze exposed the foliage is nowhere near as healthy and as vigorous. There has been at least some cold damage. So you can see that's a big advantage of this straw mulch, protecting from that midwinter cold and delaying the bloom. Now just for, just for a little experiment, we usually recommend taking the mulch off in mid-March. This row, we left the straw on until the first week of April. You can see this isn't a disease with this discoloration that you see in the middle. That was where the leaves had started to grow under the mulch. Because there was no light, they were kind of pale whitish yellow. We uncovered them and they're starting to green up. But the biggest thing to notice about this is that there are no flower blossoms, no flower buds or flower clusters visible at all. We've delayed it 
enough so that we really have no worry with this row as far as damage from that freeze that we just had last night when it got down to 27 degrees. Whereas where we took off the mulch earlier and it went through the spring development period without the benefit of a mulch, started earlier and started blossoming earlier, we did have to worry about the freeze. And as a matter of fact, we did lose a portion of the crop to the cold temperatures.